The Aurora Borealis While many have experienced this wonderful phenomena, few know the science behind it. Let's take a closer look. The science behind the aurora starts with the sun. Solar wind from the sun is hurled out in all directions through the solar system at millions of miles per hour. When the solar wind reaches Earth, our magnetic shield deflects the charged particles around our planet. Like a classic bar magnet, our planet's magnetic field forms looping arcs connecting the two poles. This leaves a small hole at either side of the globe where charged particles can enter. Under normal conditions, the charged particles excite an area known as the auroral oval, bringing colorful displays to the extreme northern and southern regions of the world. During periods of high geomagnetic activity, however, the solar wind chips away at our magnetic shield, allowing the auroral oval to expand and move to middle latitudes. Increases in the speed and density of the solar wind, along with a number of other factors, can result in enhanced activity. These changes in solar wind are caused by the sun. Satellites orbiting Earth studying the sun let us observe the sun in different wavelengths of light, revealing the structures that can cause changes in the solar wind. One of these structures are sunspots, which are regions of cooler plasma with strong magnetic interaction. They come in all shapes and sizes and can morph and change over time. Solar cycles dictate the amount of spots on the solar disk, with solar maximum having many sunspots and solar minimum having little or no sunspots. Solar cycles usually last about 11 years, with the last maximum being in 2014. Sunspots are unique because they can produce solar flares. During a solar flare, large amounts of radiation are released from the sun at light speed, reaching Earth in about 8 minutes. On occasion, solar flares produce coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. CMEs contain millions of tons of plasma traveling at high speeds, reaching Earth in as little as 18 hours. It is also worth noting that CMEs can occur in the absence of flares from unstable structures, such as prominences and filaments, which can spontaneously lift off the sun. Not all auroras are caused by CMEs, however. Coronal holes allow the corona of the sun to open up, allowing plasma to flow freely at high speeds for long periods. On satellite imagery, they appear as dark black patches. As we approach solar minimum and sunspot numbers decline, coronal holes will become the primary cause of aurora. Once the plasma cloud from the CME or coronal hole stream penetrates our magnetic field and reaches the ionosphere, a region of the atmosphere bordering the edge of space, it interacts with gas molecules which produce photons, resulting in the aurora. Because the atmosphere is composed of different gases, the aurora can vary in color. Oxygen gas creates green, yellow, and red aurora, while nitrogen gas creates red, violet, and blue colors. The movement of the aurora is a product of the ever-shifting magnetic combinations that take place above our heads and an example of the synergy between the sun and the earth. So the next time you see the aurora, remember the complex interactions taking place above your head. When the perfect conditions align, Mother Nature responds with the most spectacular light show on the planet. Happy Aurora hunting!